welcome back gang today we're going to talk about torsion about torque on a shaft right so if you have a shaft and you start putting torque on it you start putting twisting force remember torque is the tendency to cause rotation what happens inside of that shaft well what happens inside of that shaft is you start inducing shear stress so as i start to twist that i start inducing shear stress so imagine that a shaft is this, right? A slinky, can you see? Okay, and imagine a shaft is made up of a whole lot of individual layers of that slinky, right? As I twist that shaft, imagine what those layers are doing. They're sliding one relative to the next, right? That's shear stress, right? That's trying to shear as I twist it. And so it's putting a shear stress uh, on that plane as I rotate um, that shaft, as I put a torque on that shaft. So you can kind of imagine that as these, uh, these little layers of the slinky slide across each other. So, shear stress, that's, that's tau, right? So that's one, another way that you can have shear, not just V over A, if you remember our last equation. Last time we talked about shear tau was equal to v over a or v over 2a right uh, but now we're talking about shear stress tau shear stress same same shear stress but now this is due to a beam torque a twisting okay and equation of the day we get a new equation and that guy is tc over j okay so shear in a shaft is TC over J. Now let's talk about that. J, that's a new one for us, is the polar moment of inertia. Okay. Not to be confused with the area moment of inertia, which is I, okay? And these are going to be in round shafts generally. That's the ones I'm going to do is, is round shafts, okay? Now, the equation for J is in the front of your book, okay? So here we go, a new equation. J is equal to, this is on the equation sheet, pi over 2 r to the fourth, okay? The radius to the fourth. And this would be for a solid shaft. If you have a hollow shaft, it would be J is equal to pi over 2 times R to the fourth of the outer minus R to the fourth of the inner. Okay? This is hollow. Okay? So that's the polar moment of inertia. And again, if the, if the radius, which is in some distance units, is to the fourth power, uh, the, the, the units on this guy is going to be like inches to the fourth or millimeters to the fourth. Same units as we have for the area moment of inertia, okay? What is T? Well, T is pretty easy. T stands for torque. What's torque? Just a moment. <laughs> Did you get it? Okay, just a moment. Okay. Uh, and then what is C? C. C is the distance from the center to the point of interest. So since it's from the center of the shaft to the point of interest, it allows us to find the shear stress at any point in a shaft. So if I have a shaft, okay, and let's say that I wanted to know, well, let's just say I have a hollow shaft and I wanted to know what is the shear stress on the inside of the shaft. Well, then that would be C, right? Well, what if I want to know on the outside of the shaft? Well, then, then that would be C, right? Well, which one's worse, right? Well, the bigger I can make C, the bigger I can make the shear stress. So where is the shear stress due to torsion the very largest? on the outside of the part. That's where it's going to be the worst, right? So typically, if I'm an engineer, I want to know what's the worst case, right? And I'm typically interested in that worst case. So most of the time when you work these problems, 
when they say find find a, the towel or the shear stress, we're talking about the outside of the part because that's the worst case. But some of the problems specifically state, well, what's going on on the inside of there, right? So you just have to read what is C, okay? Uh, there you go. So that's about all there is to this equation. So let's see if we can solve that problem using that new stuff we just learned over there, okay? So we've got a shaft, okay? Let's, let's say that this is um, point A, B, C, D, and here's E, okay? Find the shear stress in stress, not the stress, stress in all sections of the hollow shaft. Ain't no hollow, but it's a hollow shaft, okay? So it's uh, 40 on the OD and 25 on the ID. That's inside diameter and outside diameter. Also, plot the torque in the shaft, all right? Let's plot the torque in the shaft. So typically what you do is you'll plot it. Let's just say, here's our eyeball, okay? This is your eyeball. Looking at that shaft, and you have to tell me, is, this, is the shaft, is the section of the shaft, the torque in each section of the shaft going to be clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? And so we'll have A, B, C, D, and E, okay? Here's A, B, C, D, and E. So, so what is the torque in section A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E? That's what we're going to find out. Okay, and we're going to use our little trick here. Remember, in the kitchen, clock is above, the counter is below. So any counterclockwise torque I'm going to put down here, any clockwise torque I'm going to put up here, okay? So how do I find the torque in each section of the shaft? All right, I think it's easiest to do this. Like, what's the section, what is AB? What is the torque in the section of the shaft here? What do you think it is? Okay, here's the easiest way to do it in my mind. Just take all the rest of this shaft and just like, imagine you cut the shaft in half right there, okay? So cover all this up. What's the torque in that section of the shaft? It's just three, isn't it? So this is three kilonewtons, right? And the torque on this section is, that would be clockwise to me, wouldn't it? Clock above, so I'm gonna go up here, wah, wah, okay? And this is three kilonewtons. Okay, what's the section in this, or the torque rather, in this next section of the shaft? Well, again, imagine cutting that shaft in half. Okay, now check this out. Cover up this section, what is it? It's three plus four clockwise, right? So it's, it's seven, right? Oh, what is it if I cover up this section of the shaft? It's eight and 15. Or eight's going one way, 15 the other, so I have to subtract that. It's seven still. What? Okay, so I'm gonna be consistent about my thing down here, so I'm gonna put that in there the same way. This section is seven. Okay. I should put, that shouldn't be kilonewtons, should it? Hold on a second. That should be kilonewton meters. Okay. Woo, that had the wrong units on there. I bet y'all were going crazy, weren't you? Meters, meters, okay, better. And then what about this next section of shaft here? Okay, let's cut that guy. Okay, cover it up, what do I have? I've got seven. And then I've got 15, which is a net of eight going the other way, right? So down here, I'm gonna do this. Eight kilonewton meters, but it's the opposite direction, okay? And then finally, I've got this last section of shaft here, and what do you think that is? Okay, how many of you think it's uh how many of you think it's eight? Well, if we cut this shaft in half and we cover up this side, you tell me how much is torque is in that shaft. It's zero. There's no torque in the shaft. It would be like this. Here's my beam, right? And I put a line on here, right? Let's say I grab this like this. 
and I twist the heck out of this, okay? How much torque is on the very end down there? How much is the line deflecting, right? How much? None, right? There's no torque in that section. It's just the long for the ride, as a matter of fact, isn't it? So each section of the shaft has got a different value of torque in it. So I'm going to have a different value of shear for section A, for section BC, for section CD, and then for section DE at the end. Now section DE, the shear stress down here, right, tau down here is going to be equal to zero. Okay, that's tau DE. Okay. So now that you have the torque, this ought to be pretty easy because we can just put in our equation. Now, one thing that doesn't change for any of these sections is the size of the shaft. It's consistent. So we can go ahead and calculate J, and let's calculate J for a hollow shaft. So J is equal to pi over 2 times the, the uh, radius of the outer. Well, the outer diameter is 40, so the outer radius is 20. Okay, minus 12.5 to the fourth, right? And that's going to give me millimeters to the fourth, isn't it? Okay, so what is that going to be here? Here we go. It's going to be 20 to the fourth minus 12.5 to the fourth uh, equals... And then that number divided by 2, and then times pi, which is 212,977.9 millimeters to the fourth. Okay? So there's J. So here we go. Let's do this. Tau for section AB. Okay, is the torque in AB is three kilonewton meters. So three kilonewton meters. Okay, now there's a couple things that I don't like about this. I got to get my units right in my brain here. So I'm going to erase that and I'm going to make it 3,000 newton meters, right? I took the kilo away. And then I'm going to get rid of the meters because everything else is going to be in millimeters. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to put a meter on the bottom, and that's 1,000 millimeters, right? T, C, C is where? Well, C is from here to the outside of the part. I'm interested in the worst, the highest shear stress. And so C is going to be 20, isn't it? Okay. Divided by J, which we just calculated down here. 212,977.9 millimeters to the fourth, right? And so millimeters, millimeters, that cancels out with two of those. Meters, meters cancel out. So that's going to leave me with newtons over millimeters squared, which is a megapascal. Yes, it is. 3,000 times 1,000 times 20 equals divided by... 212,977.9 equals 281.7. So tau in AB is 281.7 megapascals. Okay. There's one that they asked me about. The next one ought to be easy, right? Tau BC. What's the difference? Well, instead of using 3,000, I'm going to use 7,000. So 7,000 times 1,000 times same C and the same J. Uh, did I just write 281? No, dum-dum. Wrong. It's 212, 977.9. All right, how much is that? 7,000 times 1,000 times 20 divided by 212, 977.9 equals 
657.3. Okay. Whoo, that's a lot. All right, one more to go. And that would be Tau CD. Tau CD would be 8,000. Divided by 212, 977.9. Okay, now you might be saying, well, that's the opposite direction. How come you don't have a negative in front of that? Well, shear stress, remember, shear has two directions. So in one plane, it's moving one way, but in the, the next plane behind it, it's moving the other way. So express tau as kind of a, a magnitude, but the direction will be important uh, later, especially when we get to combined loading. Okay, so here we go. The last one. 8,000 times 1,000 times 20 divided by 212, 977.9 equals 751.3. Okay? And so there's your nice little introduction to how to calculate the torque in the sections. I like the cover it up method, right, to see how much torque is in a section. And then the rest is calculating J and just put it in your equation, turn the crank. Pretty easy, right? All right, good luck. I'll see you on the next video.